So I've had a lot of people contact me after that first video update and ask me, hey Matt, are you going to be teaching anything on these video updates instead of just updating us with what you're doing? And the answer is definitely yes. Um, go ahead and stop by our Facebook group, drop me an email if you ever have any questions. But today I wanted to take 10-15 minutes and actually do a short lesson for you and talk about what is the difference between a style and a system. When we talk about a style and a system, we need to talk about the language that we're using to address the two. So what is a style? A style is a method of doing something. A style is a style of boxing, a style of grappling, let's say Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a style of wrestling like Sambo. It's a style. It's a means of performing an activity and that's the way that you do it. Now there are some styles that are more in depth than others. There's very basic styles of boxing, and there's very in-depth styles of boxing. If you look at Muay Thai, you have a very in-depth style of actual boxing and kicking, as opposed to just kickboxing. So there's a lot of things that go into a style. But when we talk about a system, we're talking about something completely different, especially when we look at PROMAC. PROMAC stands for the Practical Mechanics Survival System. We're looking at the practical side the book side, the theory side of mechanics, the mechanics that go into survival. So we're looking at the practical application of physical knowledge and natural law that go into our survival and we're trying to take those things and create an entire system out of them. If you look at, let's say in my past Kadishnikov system, Kadishnikov system was an entire system but it had styles underneath it, it had a style of combat shooting, it had a style of Sambo. It had many different styles underneath that created the overall system. It had its own pedagogy. It had everything that you needed if you're going to study that. And in creating Promec, I wanted to go after the same flavor, but as I was told by my teachers over there, Matt, you're an American. You're not Russian. You need to go ahead and push forward with American ideals and American experience and create your own system of what you want to do and what will relate best to the Western mind. And that's what we've done with PROMAC. So let's talk about a system real quick. What is a system? If you take the alphabet, you're looking at letters. Just letters scattered out all over a page. They make no sense. But when you start to form them into words, and those words create sentences, sentences create paragraphs, paragraphs create pages, pages create books, books create series and volumes and pretty soon you have a lot of knowledge built up off of those letters. So what are the letters that make up and comprise the system of PROMAC? Because the style is the language of a system. It's the language of how certain things are done. But if you're just doing one thing, unless you're talking about, uh, let's look at a macro micro sense. If you're talking about a boxing style, then some, some means are just a style of boxing and some means are actually a system to develop that boxing. So you have a dietary style. This is how we eat. You have a style of working out. This is how we work out in our gym. This is how we spar. This is how we psychologically train. This is how we wrap our hands. These are the clothes that we wear. Those things are a style that are creating a system of boxing. And it's the same way with PROMAC. When you look at PROMAC, you have your physics, your mechanics, your physiology, your knowledge of psychology, your knowledge of survival off the land, and numerous types of land types and environments and climates. You have all of these things and they create out of them a system, out of those styles of doing things. So today I want to talk to you about one small tiny element within PROMAC that is part of the language of PROMAC and that is one type of lever is the third class lever. And we're going to explore that for about five minutes. And I'm going to give you some examples of what a third class lever is, but also so you can see how that language creates an entire system. In layman's terms, in order to have a lever, you have to have a point of rotation, distance, length, and a load, a force, because a lever is about moving an object using the most efficient means to do it to get the most effective amount of work. So today we're going to talk about the third class lever. What is a third class lever? A third class lever is where you have the point of effort between the fulcrum, the pivot point, 
and the load are the weight you're trying to move. So if you look at the human arm, what we have is, is we have the load here, and we have our pivot point if we're just trying to lift. And then we also have, in between here, we have our effort. So our bicep is actually our effort in order to affect this rotation right here with an object. So what you were looking at is a simple third class lever.